We are two plus weeks into NFL free agency and Joe Shane continues to try to improve this roster. He signed two players over the weekend that I wanted to talk about. Hadn't gotten a chance on the channel to break down these players that they signed. I'm excited to do so and I think they are definitely going to make this team better. We'll dive into that in a second. But first, if you're watching today's show, it means you're probably a Giants fan. And if you are a Giants fan, that means you probably hate the Cowboys and you hate losing to the Cowboys. And so far in March, Giants now has picked up almost 2,000 subscribers. That is awesome. But we're losing to the Dallas Cowboys report, our Cowboys channel here at Chat Sports. And Tom Downey, the host of that channel, he's been talking a lot of smack. So let's shut him up. If you love the Giants, you hate the Cowboys, and you want free, informative, entertaining coverage every day on Big Blue, subscribe, turn the notifications on, and F Dallas. All right, the first move the Giants made, they re-signed veteran wide receiver Isaiah Hodgins. At one point, I didn't think that this was going to be possible for Hodgins to come back to the Giants, considering he was a restricted free agent. And the Giants, they ultimately declined to give him a tender offer of one, one year, $3 million. The contract details for Hodgins have not officially been released, but if I had to connect the dots here, I would assume that it's less than this contract because they would have just offered him the tender if that's what they wanted to sign him for. I really do believe that Isaiah Hodgins is an underrated wide receiver. Gotten to see him now for almost two full seasons with the Giants. And does he have limitations to his game? Yes. Is he someone that's going to eat up yards after catch? No. Is he someone that's going to take the top off the defense on go route and deep balls? No. But I believe that he's one of the better short to intermediate route runners that are on this football team. And he has quality size. And over the last two years, there's been quality production for Hodgins. Remember, he signed with the Giants midway through the 2022 season after being waived by the Buffalo Bills. And I think you can make the case in the second half of 2022, he was the Giants' best receiver. 33 catches in eight games. If you put that over a 17-game season, that's a lot. 350 yards over eight games. 10.6 yards per catch. 43.9 yards per game. Pretty damn good for a guy that's just got waved by a former team. And he had four touchdowns. This past year, though, the production not only kind of slipped a little bit, but really the over, overall workload for Isaiah Hodgins was not even close to the same. Hodgins only had 21 grabs this past year for 230 yards. Uh, he kind of just got squeezed out of the Giants rotation at the wide receiver spot. Uh, and it stinks because I do think that he is someone that should continue to get reps. Only uh, Had three TDs, but only 13.5 yards per game. Let's not forget, though, what he did in the v Minnesota Vikings game in the playoffs. The guy was awesome, man. Uh, he absolutely cooked Patrick Peterson. He pretty much sent his career into a downward spiral. He had nine receptions for 108 yards, 12 yards per catch, and one touchdown in those two playoff games against the Vikings as well as against the Philadelphia Eagles, that bloodbath of a game. I think he's a really good player. And if you're going to run back Daniel Jones' as quarterback, he's definitely got some connection and some chemistry with Hodgins. And nobody runs a better bang eight. Nobody runs that better skinny post inside the red zone than Isaiah Hodgins. Remember, he cooked Patrick Peterson on that for a touchdown. He just finds a way to get that inside leverage, still puts some pressure on the outside hip of that DB, puts his foot in the ground, plants ball right there. That bang eight route is almost impossible to stop if you have great chemistry with your wide receiver. And Hodgins has showed he knows how to uh, slowly get to that route, set up the DB, one cut, he's open. Jones has done a good job of hitting him there. He's a good player. The Giants still, though, need to add some Legit talent to this wide receiver room. You look at the eight guys on the roster, well, nine if you uh, include Gunnar Olszewski as a receiver. I see him more as a special team specialist. Maybe he um, gets more receiver reps this year. I don't know if that's a good thing if he does, though. I like Darius Slayton. I think he's a wide receiver two or wide receiver three, though. I think Wandale Robinson, former second-round pick out of Kentucky, is going to be a good slot receiver in this league. I still think that there are really, really high expectations for Jalen Hyatt inside the building. We know that he could push the field vertically. He puts pressure on DBs. And defensive coordinators throughout the week are stretch, stressing to their team, do not let Hyatt get behind you. Hodgins comes back. You sign a veteran like Isaiah McKenzie who comes over from the Colts, spent time in Buffalo with Dable and Shane, so he has some familiarity with the system. 
the undrafted free agent All-American Heisman winner. Not really, but you guys love Bryce Ford Wheaton. I'm not so sure that he's ever going to be a legit player. Then you got some other players, like Dennis Houston, who was on the practice squad, comes over from the Dallas Cowboys, and Chase Cota, as well as Gunnar Olszewski. Good guys, but good guys don't win games in this league, and you need weapons on the outside that put some fear into defensive backs as well as defensive coordinators as they're prepping for the week. And I don't think the Giants defense or the Giants wide receivers really did all that that often this year. You look at the stats. Yes, yeah, Slayton had a good season, but if your wide receiver one has 50 grabs for 770 yards and four touchdowns, you're probably going to be at the bottom of the league when it comes to offensive production, and that's exactly what the Giants were. I think Wandale Robinson and Hyatt are going to see an increased role this year, and I expect a major increase in production, and I honestly want Hodgins to play. Thing is, though, Hodgins may have to fight to make this roster because if they sign a receiver, excuse me, if they go out and draft a wide receiver the Giants do in round one, Hodgins is pretty much your wide receiver five. I'm not sure how many snaps he's going to get. Whether it's in the draft, whether it's a trade, whatever they got to do, the Giants need to find a way to add an alpha to this wide receiver room. They have to get somebody that can play on the boundary outside the numbers and be a threat to go to work. They need a legit wide receiver one. We like Slayton. We like Hodges. We like Hyatt. We like Robinson. Those guys, in my opinion, are all supplementary pieces that can be, I would say, productive in a wide receiver room. But you need that dude. You need that guy, whether that's Neighbors. Where that's a dune say, or maybe Marvin Harrison Jr. I'm not. I am not going to say it's impossible. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes quarterback, 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 quarterback. It goes Williams, May, Daniels, and McCarthy in the top four. I would not be surprised if the Giants trade up to five to go get Marvin Harrison Jr. I have heard that they absolutely love MHJ. That'd be pretty freaking sweet. Show some love, though, to our guy Isaiah Hodgins. He's actually a giant right now. I'm glad he's back. I think he's underrated. I think he was underutilized last year, and I'm glad he's back on the football team. Show him some love. Type his jersey number, number 18, down in the comment section. The Giants also went out and signed veteran offensive tackle Matt Nelson. The Giants have signed the 28-year-old right tackle. He started two games for the Detroit Lions last year, but he has 14 career starts in four seasons, and he has appeared in 43 games. We told you guys on the channel all offseason long prior to free agency that the number one priority for this football team was to improve the offensive line. Joe Shane has made it duty number one to try to get this whole line back on track. You go out and sign John Runyon and Jermaine Illuminor in day one of free agency. You go out and sign Stinney. You go out and sign Schlotman, and now you sign Nelson, adding some proven productive players in this league. You look at the pro football focus grades for the career of Matt Nelson. I kind of want to focus on 2021 because that was the year that he had 11 starts. And I don't expect him to be a starter for this team. Quite frankly, he will not be a starter unless there are injuries to him. But the six foot seven, 315 pound, 28 year old tackle started two games in 2023, allowed one QB hit, one pressure, and when he had 11 starts in 2021, he allowed three sacks, four QB hits, and 34 pressures. The sad part about it was, in 2021, he was ranked, when it comes to pass blocking efficiency, 83rd out of 84 qualified tackles. Had a 71.6 pass block rate this year, but not a lot of substance and not a large sample size there, as he only played 85 snaps. Uh, good, solid player, um, but really, this is a move for just more depth. This is depth on the offensive line. Ben Bredesen no longer a part of this team. And the Giants are bringing in guys that have quality starts under their belt to have an absolute competition at the offensive line position throughout the summer. And I cannot wait for that. I think the best way to find out who the top dogs are is let them compete. And that's what the Giants are going to have. They are going to have a healthy offensive line competition in training camp, in mini camp, into the preseason, I would say even into the regular season. So you get a look now at the offensive line depth chart for the Giants. This is me projecting what the starting five will be. We all know Andrew Thomas is going to be the starting left tackle for this football team. One of the best in the business, if not the best. I think John Runyon will play the left guard spot. He could play both, but he said in his introductory press conference with the Giants, someone asked him, if you had a side that you prefer to play guard, he said it would be left guard. John Michael Schmidt, second-year player, will be your starting center. 
I think to start the season, it'll be Jermaine Illuminor at the right guard and Evan Neal at the right tackle. But the Giants have plenty of other players that have Evan Neal struggles can step in. Joshua Zudu, Aaron Stinney, Austin Schlotman, Marcus McKeithen, now Nelson. That's five players that I think all will be putting pressure on Evan Neal. And if Neal struggles, I think you move Illuminor to right tackle and then Azudu, Stinney, Schlotman, McKeithen, maybe slide into right guard. I don't know if I want Matt Nelson as my starting right tackle. I do like him, though, as a swing tackle. For Evan Neal, the third-year player, seventh overall pick out of Alabama, it is now or it is never. It is time to put it into drive. It is time to figure it out. Because if you struggle again this year, if you don't live up to the hype, you are most likely going to be cut this time next year. It is now or it is never for the former All-American, the guy that was projected to be an All-Pro, hasn't lived up to the hype. He needs to do it now. The Giants are depending on you. Please, just be an average football player. That's all we need. It's also time for Carmen Brasillo to earn his check. He's got young talent on this team. Azudu, top 70 pick. Evan Neal, top 10 pick. You bring in Runyon. You bring in Illuminor, who you brought in from Las Vegas. You have Stinney. You have Schlotman. You have Nelson. Is it the most talented offensive line group in the world? No. But everyone wanted to put OG Bobby Johnson's head right inside the target of why this offensive line was bad. Carmen Brasillo, go on your check. Go prove that you are a guy that actually develops offensive line talent. Because if you can get Evan Neal to be a reliable guy and you continue the development of Runyon and you continue the development of Luminor, you may have a statue built outside of MetLife. That is how bad the Giants fans are begging for a quality offensive line. Carmen Brasillo, go earn your check, my man. What's your confidence level in the Giants offensive line? They made it a priority to improve it. Runyon, Illuminor, Schlotman, Stenny, Nelson. That's five new players added to this whole line. You're getting back um, Marcus McKeithen. You're getting back a healthy Joshua Azudu. It's going to be a competition who makes the roster. I at least applaud Joe Shane for going out and adding players to it. Scale it 1 to 10. 1 being you're not confident, 10 being you are uber confident. Let me know where you stand on the offensive line. Make sure you are following me over on social media, on Twitter, as well as on Instagram. My boss has told me I got to get my social media game up. So I'm kindly asking you guys to follow me over there so I can get the bosses off my butt. Make sure you also are subscribed to the channel. We're trying to beat the Cowboys report and subscribers added in the month of March. We are right there, ladies and gentlemen. You hate the Cowboys, you love the Giants, you're going to love this channel. Subscribe and turn your notifications on and have a good weekend.